So there is this feature in Desmos that plays sound from a Desmos graph, Audio Trace, and this is what it sounds like. But to see how I got here, we have to go back about six months ago when there was the Desmos art competition. Nathan Lee had managed to make an amazing Desmos sound graph of Flight of a Bumblebee and was featured as a competition finalist. Nathan's work was certainly impressive, but there were problems. So now we are one month ago, and I decided to start working on an audio trace graph myself. But I ran into the same issue that Nathan Lee's graph had. You see, Desmos audio depends on not what the value of the function is, but rather where it is on the screen. It is an accessibility feature after all. So when sharing that graph, since different people had different screen sizes, the notes would appear on different parts of the screen plus making the notes sound different for different people. So, how do we fix this? Well, we have to change the zoom, and this is where El Fisho 2 came in. You see, when sharing a graph, Desmos will keep the current zoom, but only to the x-axis, so we will always be on the same on the side. But we only want the y-axis to remain the same, because that is what determines how high or low the note is. The official solution was very simple and genius. All you simply had to do was press on the wrench icon and change it to the maximum and minimum value of y-axis. I don't know why it took me two weeks to realize that. Because when you set a value, Desmos adjusts the zoom to that value, not the other way around. Okay, so that's easy, right? Implementing it into Desmos was pretty easy, just took a couple of graphs and some creativity of how to make the interface easy and quick to use. Well, that's when we started running into problems. Problems called bugs. Rest are added in the middle between notes, but the bug is that rest lengths are also kind of random. See? Different rest lengths here. This made me really mad because I couldn't use rest reliably and everything had to be post edited to make everything line up in audacity. At first, I thought it was lag dependent, and there is a little bit of that, but generally it's just completely random. And then there are all the bugs associated with invisible functions. When you hide a function and make it invisible, the sound still plays. But this is only local. Refresh the page or share the graph, and you're no longer able to play an invisible function. And also, when in that invisible state, the function will no longer update. So whatever you will hear will be whatever it was before you made the function visible. A few more bugs. Moving lines don't register, as they won't update after starting the audio trace. Opening or closing a folder with a targeted function in it will play the first note of the audio trace. Changing the volume while an audio trace is playing will sound the first note. Finally, tell me what in the world is going on here with these functions. Okay. With that out of the way, all that was needed was a bit of external editing to synchronize the graph audio in Audacity, edit the video in DaVinci Resolve, and then that was it. So, enjoy!